What is the financial management strategy of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security? How is DHS modernizing its financial management systems? And what's next in its financial modernization strategy? I'll explore these questions and so much more with our very special guest, Stacey Barcott, Acting Chief Financial Officer at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. I want to start off with some context. What is the mission of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Office of Chief Financial Officer? Well, let me start with the DHS mission first, and that is with honor and integrity, we will safeguard the American people, our homeland, and our values. And the reason why I do that is because my the ultimate mission of the CFO's office is to secure and protect resources for homeland security and for homeland security to be able to perform its mission. So we are fundamentally mission enablers. We have to make sure that we are supporting the frontline operators that are performing the business of DHS. And that means getting the money in the right place to the right people at the right time. Stacey, um, I was wondering, what is DHS's financial management strategy and the overall strategic goals that support your mission to provide effective financial management across the enterprise? Thank you for that question. Um, the overall fin- financial strategy of the of me as in the CFO's office, we have four main goals. Um, be a workplace of choice for highly skilled and talented people delivering financial excellence. Um, and the overall goal of financial excellence to me is to do things better, more efficiently and effectively to support the DHS mission than anybody has done before in the past. So it's really driving ourselves to continue to build on the how can we be innovate and be better at supporting the DHS mission. Um, and then I categorize the next three into what I will you do my shorthand of is get the data by getting the right business practices and systems in place to help proactive decision support, and then use that data, which means making resourcing decisions based on mission requirements, priorities, how dollars are being spent and informing those leadership decisions. And then last is what every public servant strives to do is to be a good steward of the taxpayer dollars and to be able to demonstrate that to our partners, to Congress, and to the public that we serve. So those are our four overarching goals for the financial management community. That's wonderful. You know, I want to transition and offer congratulations to you and your team on your efforts around modernizing the financial system. Uh, within the DHS enterprise. I was hoping you could talk a little bit about the progress to date. And then specifically, could you elaborate on the Coast Guard's transition and implementation of this new state-of-the-art financial management system? Sure, thank you. Financial systems modernization, something that's near and dear to my heart because we've lived it for the last 19 years. Um, (laughs) It's been quite a long, um, bumpy, windy, Lots of speed bumps, lots of challenges, lots of going around the cliffs um, and up mountains and down mountains to try to get to where we are today. Um, So we have finally, I will say, after we went the shared service provider route and for uh, a, a couple of different reasons decided we weren't going to expand our footprint in that service provider. Um, And quite frankly, our one component that was going, our one agency that was going to be going next was larger than that whole service provider's 19 um, agency customer base. So it it, it was a bit daunting for them. It was a bit daunting for us, but we picked up the system that they built for us, put it in a DHS data center and proceeded to, um, last year, get the Transportation Security Agency up and on the modern system after we did a small agency and made sure that it was all working right. And then um, the Coast Guard. And the Coast Guard is by far the largest, probably one of the largest, most complex financially organizations um, and mission-wise that the department has. So it was um, a labor of love 
by a full heck of a lot of people across the department, but they are now, as of December, live on the modern system and um, chugging along, paying their bills and um, trying to figure out all everything that they need to do to use it. I mean, they had probably eight times more interfaces because of the complexity of their operations. And let's see, 10 times the amount of users when we went from 1,000 users being on the system to 1,600 users across the entire Coast Guard with a tremendous amount of business process um, re-engineering that had to go into making the new system pretty effective. And what I um, would like to refer to as it was almost the perfect storm So it took a lot of dedication by a lot of tremendously talented people working together across multiple functional areas that all spoke different languages. Um, So a lot of my job, I probably for the last two years, 50% of the work that I did was focusing on making sure we were all communicating effectively, staying on the same page, doing regular reviews of issues with all team members that were involved to make sure that everything stayed on track. Um, so it, it's been a labor of love. Uh, the Coast, With the Coast Guard going live on a modern financial system, I had, we have about 40% of the department's spending flowing through a modern Um, And let me just say it's an integrated financial procurement and asset management system. Um, So it is quite a feat of getting, and the integrated system between all of those three key areas that um, all relate to each other transaction-wise and being able to track the dollars with integrated controls through one overall system. So you're not moving information from one place to another is phenomenal. So I am I am so proud of the people that worked on. They have so much to be proud of. Um, it's been quite a storm. We're not quite all the way out of it, but I am looking forward to um, our next implementations that are coming down the line, which will now be FEMA, and then uh, what we classify that'll be a, that will be a really good project to be done. They're they're pretty complex financially also with insurance and grants and different funds that they have available and different management that goes into it. And then we have what uh, the next project is called, we refer to as the CUBE because Immigrations and Customs Enforcement Services about five other agencies. Um, so together, there's they're the six with us and we are going to tackle them next. And then we will basically have almost the entire department on modern systems with standard business practices and a common accounting line and a common appropriation structure. That's wonderful. I'm wondering um, if you could share with us, Stacy, what lessons have been learned from the Coast Guard experience and what are some of the key challenges that were really in, faced during that particular time? Uh, how did you get smarter and overcome them? Um, well, we had a lot of time. To, to gather our lessons learned <laughs> before we started the Coast Guard implementation since we've been trying for so long. But, you know, they say it's not how many times you fall down. It's that you get up that last, it's how many times you get up. Um, so it's uh, the biggest lesson that um, we learned, I learned along the way, because I saw a lot of them not go exactly right, is that you have to have Um, very engaged, collaborative, and connected leadership team. For me, this wasn't a financial system um, project. This was myself, the chief procurement officer, the chief information officer from the systems perspective, um, to a certain extent, our asset management people, and quite frankly, the undersecretary for management, and it's always been on the forefront of our senior, senior leadership's um, uh, perspective. And it really took the, I didn't basically go to a meeting with the exception of some of my internal direct staff without all three of us at the table, collectively hearing what each other was hearing and listening to each other's concerns and helping each other work through it. The management business support operations team um, and the management directorate that we have 
And that I think one of the biggest reasons we were successful is because we all wanted to see each other succeed. And really, it, I've, I haven't worked with a finer group of leadership folks in ever in my entire career. So it, that was one. And, and really making it a so the joint effort at both the leadership level and at the, um, shall I say, working level. Often when one organization's staff asks another organization's staff to do something, they all have their own competing priorities. So it was a matter of us as leaders getting them all in the room and making sure we all understood what the priorities were so we could help them prioritize. So it it was continuous, continuous engagement um, and always bringing bringing the team not any individual to the table to quickly address any issues and, and raising those um, sooner rather than later because staff always want to um, solve problems themselves. Um, and we quickly, I, I learned over time that if you don't direct them head or attack them head on and help um, get rid of those roadblocks and challenges that they're facing and find out about them, for one, then people will try to figure it out themselves and and not be as successful as if you were there being their advocate and helping coordinate and collaborate with the other business areas. Because it is it was such a joint project. No one person could could and no one function could have achieved it by themselves. It's a, you kind of hinted at this, but I was wondering if there's any any other as you reflect on the success of Coast Guard and then looking forward to FEMA and, and the cube, as you, uh, as you referred to them, perhaps you could sort of elaborate even further around successes and best practices employed and, and what you hope to accomplish in that area for the next iteration. Yes, that's a good question. So some of the other Um, lessons learned that we are already working on accomplishing for the next iteration is really paying attention to the data Um, because it's a we're we're moving a massive quantity of old and often reliable data um, from one system realigning it into different buckets and putting it in a totally different structure in a new system so if your old data, if, if you don't focus on cleaning, and by cleaning, it took me a while to figure out what cleaning your data meant, but now I know. Um, really making sure that everything is categorized the right way, that there's not missing data pieces, that there's not open obligations that don't connect to a contract. So we have already started down that road, and we are tracking metrics against making sure that we are doing those data reviews for both FEMA and the CUBE right now. Um, and, and getting a solid, the other thing that you definitely have to do is get your subject matter experts for the different business processes, whether or not it's paid to procure or um, any of like 10 handful of business, the core business processes that you're going to be performing and mapping out how you currently do it today and having all of that work done up front so that you can understand what the changes because the components that we have right now are um the femas they have a lot of customized work going on in the background and we're going from a customized systems to a commercial off-the-shelf system and we're not we're not configuring or we're not changing that commercial off the shelf system. We're not doing any development modifications. We are going to keep it as is, and we're only going to configure the business processes inside it. So that the work that needs to be done up front to map your current business processes and clean your data has been ongoing already. Cause I, it's not, can, can never emphasize those two things enough. And people honestly don't believe they really need to do it or focus on it because they've all got regular day jobs and we haven't started modernizing them yet. We're close, but we have really gotten them focused. And I do regular leadership reviews with them to see where they are 
Um, and now that they have all of their metrics and business process tracking, uh, mapping in place, um, it's the work to be done up front can't be underestimated. I would like to transition into um, building an organization, uh, that kind of theme. And, and, and like most organizations within government, I understand that uh, your office is looking to attract the best uh, financial professionals with the right skills to serve such an important mission like DHS. Would you elaborate on any opportunities available to individuals who may be interested in a career with DHS and in particular with your office? And what are you doing to attract them? That is a great question, especially since I let off a little bit earlier with um, our number one goal is getting good people. Um, And that's easy to say, uh, quite challenging to do, but I am very proud of what we have internally inside uh, is our workforce development division uh, inside the CFO's office. I like to say that they are probably one of our smaller divisions of the CFO, completely dedicated, though, on making a long-lasting and impact on our workforce with um, what we have set up for financial professionals incoming program for people that have recently graduated college with a centralized training program. And this isn't just servicing my headquarters CFO office, it's for the entire DHS financial management community. Um, and we've really built partnerships with the other, with the DHS, other operational agencies, with financial operations to really continue to move this forward, to do college outreaches. I do CFO panels with different colleges um, regular forums to say these are opportunities that we have available in the federal government and here's how you apply and applying anywhere in the federal government if you're coming from outside the federal government is uh, can be quite challenging to navigate especially for um, people who aren't used to it but I offer myself up to as a resource for anybody that may have questions I don't and I get them connected with the right people who can help answer their questions about getting into the workforce. And I am extremely sad. Uh, it's, it's a lot of self-satisfaction when I can do some mentoring at different, uh, for interns at different financial professionals, associations, and have them reach out to me and say, how do I do this? And I, I There's nothing better in the world than to help other people find their way in. But when we have um, dedicated leadership development programs, technical training programs, career path guides for different functional areas in place, and we're really making it real to our workforce to continue to build skill sets, leadership skill sets, and to continue to uh, build that pipeline through a career professionals program into the department, we monitor and track the heck out of making sure that we're successful and we are continually making adjustments to how we develop and attain people. This has been the Business of Government Hour, a conversation with Stacy Marcotte, Acting Chief Financial Officer at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Be sure to join me next time for another informative, insightful, and in-depth conversation on improving government and its effectiveness. Until then, subscribe, download, and listen to the entire interview at Podcast One, iTunes, or on your favorite podcast app. And as always at businessofgovernment.org.